struggling to find food, water and medical supplies, but most distressing are the bodies strewn amongst the debris. It's still thought as many as 10,000 people died in the typhoon, and now illness could claim even more. Southeast Asia correspondent Zoe Daniel reports from the worst hit area of Tacloban City on the island of Leyte. And a warning, viewers may find some of the images distressing. The road is now open between Tacloban Airport and the city, and this is what it's revealed, the path of destruction of the super typhoon. This was once a village, now completely obliterated. Even concrete buildings have been smashed to pieces by the force of the wind and the storm surge that followed. And everywhere here, bodies that haven't been collected. There's absolutely no doubt that the final death toll will be enormous. At 3am, they gather at the airport in Tacloban, refugees from a storm beyond their worst nightmares. I don't know how, how, how we can start our new life after this day. A stream of C-130s is providing a temporary escape, at least. These people are desperate to get out. Payan has taken away their homes and their livelihoods, as well as knocking out practicalities like power and communications. For those who choose to stay, it's desperate. They have next to no shelter, little clothing, food or water. We need help. We need to have a bit if you have some big heart. We need help. And there's the pervasive stench of death. Philip was swept out of his house, carried hundreds of metres by the storm surge. He somehow dragged himself to safety. I thought I would die. So you, f you flew into sea all the way across here, all okay, the way out to there. Yeah. And then you climbed out over all this stuff. Yeah. And then he shows me the body of his friend who didn't make it. His is not the only body that hasn't been collected. They're everywhere in town and on the beaches. A teenager swept away and drowned. An adult and a tiny baby marooned. So how, how do you feel about all of this? Cracked down, but still fighting. It's beyond grim, but somehow hope survives. Zoe Daniel, ABC News, Tacloban City. The world has sprung into action to support the Philippines in the wake of the typhoon. Australia has announced its contribution to the aid effort will increase to $10 million. For many Filipino Australians, the terrible wait goes on for news of missing loved ones. Ben Worsley reports. The images from the Philippines are heartbreaking for anyone to watch. Imagine how Joy Robinson feels watching from Sydney with no idea if her family's alive. Her mother, two brothers and two sisters are missing. Well, I can't help but cry. And... Uh... It's really devastating. Nanette Della Torre found out this afternoon that her family is safe, but countless friends of hers are gone. Being here and not being there and uh, doing nothing at all, I'm so helpless. It's the horrible feeling that you could ever have in your life. Help is arriving and more aid is being pledged around the world, but the task is enormous. The reality you have to contend with is that uh, it's easier said than that. You've got the goods, how do you airlift them? You don't have enough planes, yet you don't have enough transportation to bring them there. The heads of the Philippines Red Cross are in Australia for a conference, also attended by Julie Bishop. The foreign minister today increased Australia's contribution to the relief effort from $400,000 to $10 million. We will obviously stand by ready to support the Philippines in whatever way we can, but indeed it's considered to be a substantial package from one country. The UK has pledged a similar amount. The UN and EU are sending medical supplies and shelter. The US is providing military support. We're very touched on that, that uh, it's, uh, it's becoming to be a one world thing. You know, We're not alone. The response has been immediate. The help will be needed for a long time to come. Ben Worsley, ABC News. Vietnam is preparing for widespread flooding as the typhoon crosses its coast. Haiyan changed course overnight and has been downgraded to a tropical storm, but it's still producing heavy rain and winds over 120 kilometres an hour. 
No casualties have been reported, but there is property damage in port cities. As the storm heads inland, flooding is expected in Hanoi, with thousands evacuated from low-lying areas. Police there are being briefed for rescue operations, with the country's north expected to be affected by the heavy rain. The Department of Foreign Affairs has set up a 24-hour helpline for those concerned about relatives in both the Philippines and Vietnam. That number is 1300 555 135. For anyone looking to help or for further information, the Red Cross is one of several agencies providing emergency aid. Go to redcross.org.au. On to other news now. The state government has approved James Packer's Crown Casino Resort at Barangaroo.